This is George Pies with Anime and Comics Animania, and this is the movie review. Now, this weekend I went to go see Transformers: Age of Extinction. Now, in this movie, well, as we all know, there's already had tremendous success with Michael Bay, which, as you all know from a lot of the podcasts, I'm not a big fan of Michael Bay. In fact, I personally want to murder Michael Bay. Michael Bay, I will put you down. Anyway, so anyway, with the new Transformers movie, this kind of, this movie kind of, I will admit, had a bit of a different angle, especially with Mark Wahlberg and Nicole Perez and Jack Reynolds. Now, in the past three movies, we had Shia LaBeouf as, you know, playing, uh, I think his name, no, not Archer Wahlberg, Wiki, that was his grandfather's name. I'm Sam Witwicky. So he played Sam Witwicky along with Megan Fox, who played Michaela for two movies until she, Megan Fox decided to drop because she doesn't get along with Michael Bay. But apparently they are getting along now for the Teenage Ninja Turtles movie. So anyway, so with this movie, I definitely have to say it was a completely different angle from the other one, considering the fact that we had Mark Wahlberg, who is a dad, who is an inventor, and he's trying to put his daughter through college. And he does this by making all these kind of like gadgets. So it's like if they took Uncle Stu from the Rugrats and said, Hey, Uncle Stu, you want to be in a Transformers movie? He's like, yeah. It's like, guess what? You get to play yourself. So when you think about it, that's kind of like when they had Mark Wahlberg portray, uh, portray only as a smarter Uncle Stu from the Rugrats, or Stu Pickles, whichever your uh, preference, I say in close to because of the Angelica reference. So anyway, in this movie, it took kind of a different angle because you had the father and son, uh, sorry, father and daughter, N Nicole Perez, uh, relationship in which they, you, you know, in which they, you know, because it's kind of one of those movies where, okay, the father wants to do something for his daughter, but there's like a struggle. Already, you could see kind of how their characters are developing. There's an argument between the father trying to pursue his dreams, but he sometimes puts his dreams before the necessities of his daughter, of what his daughter needs for in order to get to college. But however, he's still overprotective in the fact that he does not let her date to the fact that his daughter was born out of wedlock when he got his wife pregnant at an early age of 19 or 20. Now, as always, we have the ever-famous Optimus Prime returning, you know, to, to the Transformers franchise because we cannot have Transformers without Optimus Prime, same as Bumblebee. We also got a few new Transformers, some of which I'm uh, not familiar with the name. One of them is a samurai. Uh, one of them is almost a, is an army guy who is played by the same guy who did uh, the Fred Flintstone in the live-action Flintstones movie, and he played the dad in the live-action Speed Racer. And so, pretty much on here, you know, What's going on now is the government kind of sees no use for the Transformers anymore, and they kind of want to kill them. And not only that, they somehow this organization has found a way to make Transformers technology. But what they but what they're what they're using to make the new technology is they're using uh, Negatron, and they're using his you know memory in order to make it. Now this sets up a pretty interesting. I mean, it's kind of a predictable tw plot twist, but it is unexpected. Also. The way you see kind of humans developing transformer technology and adding that new twist to it of when they transform, making them look like the T-1000 from Terminator when they transform because they look all liquidy-like. 
is kind of a neat twist. A lot of people were bothered by it, especially my co-host, Big Andy. But it's like, hey, it's a give or take. And with this, you know, it actually did not mind it. Now, here's one major difference that separates this one from all of Michael Bay's Transformers. First one had to do with Sam and had to do with the Transformers and finding, you know, the cube. And they did. Uh, the second one, uh, uh, you know, you know, the Re Revenge of the Fallen. That one, the storyline kind of carried out the same way, only adding a few new twists like Sam being in college. And also the, you know, him and uh, Michaela's relationship. However, after the third one, the plot became so repetitive, you're just like, what the heck, Michael Bay? Can you come up with a, uh, with a different sort of twist to add to it? Yeah, I know he added Sentinel Prime. I know he added all that. And I know CGI was the only way to do it nowadays, because nowadays practical effects are kind of expensive. But I still think they could have done it well with a mix of CGI and practical effects, just like they've done in other movies like Jurassic Park and the old Star Wars. Now, in conclusion, what I have to say about this one is much more better plot, much more better angled, characters are much more well-developed, and it's not, it feels like a completely different movie. I mean, you, it still has that feel of the Transformers, but it feels like it's been reprised thanks to Mark Wahlberg and thanks to his character, which you're able to take more seriously, unlike, because let's be honest, when I see Sh Shia LaBeouf a lot of times, I still see Lewis from even Stevens. Ah! 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 Yeah, you remember that. Every episode, Lewis was screaming that annoying scream every time I hear it. It is Lewis from even Stevens. That was my biggest problem with Shia LaBeouf, not just in this movie, but in every single movie. But you gotta give him credit. He is a goofball, managed to make, make himself big. And I'm actually gonna say this, Michael Bay actually made a good movie. Now, I don't know whether I should be pissed at the fact that Michael Bay made a good movie, or should I be pissed at the, uh, pissed at the fact that Michael Bay kind of still made a lot of shitty movies and has finally redeemed himself. And also he had Steven Spielberg producing this. So, Spielberg, it's give or take. Anyway, with the whole plot in general, I have to give this movie, I'm going to say, a 7 out of 10. And Michael Bay should be grateful that I'm giving him this for because of the fact that uh, his movies have a lot of plot holes and sometimes they lack continuity. Anyway, I'm George Pies from Anime and Comics Fan Mania. Uh, also, like uh, like this video if you, you, know, you want to see more. Also, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also comment down below. Let's get into some discussion. Maybe get into an argument uh, argument with me about my, if you like Michael Bay. Heck, I love getting into Michael Bay arguments all the time. Also, check out our, our live podcast from uh, every Monday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. Also, if you're going to Kineticon 2014 this weekend, we will be at there. I will be doing interviews. And this is George Pies from Anime Comics uh, Fanomania saying there is more than meets the eye. From here to Japan, this is fantastic.